there. This is Rusty Anderson, and you're listening to Things We Said Today with Ken Michaels and Steve Marinucci. Hello, hello, and welcome once again to a Beatles program that we call Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show in which we talk about what's going on in the world of the Beatles news-wise. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, and some of you know me for another Beatles program that I host called Every Little Thing, being joined by my co-host, the man who writes for Beatles Examiner and many Examiner columns, that being Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hello, everyone. On today's show, something different. We don't have an author on. Something different. (laughs) Something new. Hey, there's an album album title for you. And a documentary title, too. There we go. (laughs) Is it possible that we don't have a guest on in this show? I'm I'm surprised. I feel like we're being stripped naked here. This is scary. Yeah, almost. I know. This is... is is this the two virgins, two virgins <laughs> show? Two virgins show. Oh, God. There we go. It's getting ugly here. But um, what I think uh, we should tell the folks is that we're going to do a fun show here because of uh, Paul McCartney's uh, new leg of his uh, Out There tour, which, um, as we speak, is about to start in two days from now. By the time the show gets posted and it's out there, um, it's going to be a few days old. Actually, uh, it's it's Saturday, it, which will be the day this premieres on good old Fab Four Radio dot com. Okay, all right, but um, talk about see we we have such great timing. <laughs> Whose idea well, actually, was this show anyway? I don't know. It just so happens <laughs> that it falls into place like this. That's right. Like a well worn shoe. There I we guess. go, old brown shoe. <laughs> but uh, I thought we'd talk about what we did. I think. Uh, maybe a year ago on this show, which is, since Paul is about to start new shows here, and as you know, every time there's a new leg of his tour or the start of a new tour, he takes out some songs and he adds some new ones in there. And some of the songs could be brand new songs he's never done live before. Some of the songs he brings back, like he did uh, recently with Listen to What the Man Said and, and Hi, Hi, Hi. Those were nice surprises. Uh, to his set list. So I thought that the two of us would talk about uh, songs that we would like Paul to do live. And certainly in the case of my songs, we each we each have picked five songs. And actually a little bit more than that because it's impossible with a catalog as huge as Paul's to just pick five. We have a few honorable mentions, which I'm wondering if that list is going to be longer than our top five anyway. Mm-hmm. But... Um, we're going to talk about what we would like to see Paul do live. And in the case of my five songs, they're all songs that he's never done live before. And we didn't really set too many boundaries here. If Steve wants to list some songs that he hasn't done for a while, that he wants Paul to bring back into the set list, um, then he could do so as well. And Steve also did a little poll on Facebook with our fans. Well, actually, I did, the, the poll was on SurveyMonkey, but... Uh, I started on Facebook because I asked a question the other day uh, asking people just to comment on which songs they'd like and uh, to have him play. And uh, they came up with over 40 songs, uh, actually about 40 songs, and I added a couple of my own personal picks and uh, been taking a survey, and uh, um, we'll talk about the results uh, at, uh, later in the show. But uh, there's uh, some interesting uh Interesting results, and in fact, the um, the leader of the poll right now, I think, will surprise a lot of people, but let's go for it. Okay, so why don't we go back and forth? We're each going to mention our top five. Okay. I'll give my five, you give your five, I'll give number four, and you'll give your number four, and so on, and we'll talk about why we want Paul to do these songs. All okay. Right? So um, this is an almost impossible list to make because Paul's catalog, like I said, is just so huge, especially a solo catalog. With the with the Beatles stuff, it's actually a lot easier now because he's done quite a lot of his own songs now. Right. You know, I was going through the list looking at the songs he sang with the Beatles, and he's done just about all of them. There isn't many he has not done. 
That's true. And I mean, he could always pick out Lennon songs, which he has done before. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's done, he, he did, I remember one time years and years and years ago, he did Strawberry Fields Forever. And uh, that was he, part of a medley as right. a tribute with help. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's done he's done things like that before. And, you know, he did uh, Mr. Kite this time around, too. So right. anything can happen. But we just kind of went on, I just kind of went on McCartney songs rather than uh, Lennon songs. Although, I mean, that would be kind of nice. But mm-hmm. um, I just kind of went on, on mostly possible songs. Okay. So let's put it that way. Well, of my top five, I I said I have to pick a Beatles song in there, and I only picked one. Mm-hmm. And when I wrote down all the songs, and I made them songs that Paul wrote, as opposed to um, A Taste of Honey or something like that that he sang lead to in the Beatles, it was really tough to say which one I want the most, but I picked Rocky Raccoon. And okay, reason- you know, a couple of people mentioned that on Facebook. That was in the survey. And um, it's interesting that you mentioned that. Well, the thing is... And this is just how my mind works here. If I wanted to, I could make a, a top five here or a top ten list of my favorite McCartney songs, regardless of whether or not I think he'll ever do them live. This is more of what I could hear him do live and what would work live in a big audience. Sure, and I tried to I tried to, to go with that, too, as well. So what I wanted to do was, and I think I said this before on this show, I, I kind of feel like if you do an acoustic song, especially if it's a ballad or a slow song, it better be a song that everybody knows, mm-hmm. especially in a big audience. Um, and with the Beatles stuff, you can pretty much get away with just about anything. And so I thought Rocky Raccoon, because it's a mid-tempo song and people could sing along with it, and I could hear Wix do the, the, um, the keyboard part, the uh, uh, honky-tonk. Uh, sound that was played on the, on the record from sure. uh, George Martin, I can hear Paul doing that. I don't know if Paul would remember all the words. <laughs> He'd probably have to look at the monitors for, for Rocky Raccoon. But uh, I could certainly hear the crowd getting into it. So yeah. of all the songs from the Beatle years that he hasn't done live before, and I wrote down like five or six, and, and to me, truthfully, they're all equal. <laughs> it's really tough to say, well, I want Rocky Raccoon more than Martha, my dear. I'd be happy if he did Martha, my dear. But of all the ones that I, that I put aside that Paul sang lead to that he wrote or was the main writer, I picked Rocky Raccoon for that reason. Okay. It's a fun I, song, and everybody would get into it. Yeah. So what was uh, your number five? I picked one Beatle Year song, but I'm going to save that for later. The first song I'm going to mention is one that actually – pretty much no he's not going to do in the US and that's Mollusk Entire because I absolutely love that song and I've said it I've I've kind of blown that on Facebook cuz I've said it on Facebook that I would absolutely love him to do that in the US P- uh, several people have assured me he will, he will not um he will do it in Canada but he won't do it in America and be that as it may I don't think it hurts to even to, to mention it though cuz the bagpipes get to me I love the bagpipes in that song I'm a bagpipe nut, say, say what you will. But <laughs> if I went to a McCartney show and he did that, that would be my on my bucket list right there. That would be, uh, that would be uh, worth it for me. I would be very, very happy if he did that. Well, I've heard that because Paul was upset that the song wasn't pushed here right, in America, a, that, uh, and that, that supposedly, I'm not saying it's the truth, that led to his leaving Capitol. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just putting it out there. But uh, I do know that he does need bagpipes for that song, and it doesn't really, it's, it's, it would be very expensive to bring uh, bagpipe players along for an entire tour for one song. Well, it's just not practical. He could conceivably get a band in each city, although right now in America we're talking ten cities as of this moment. But, and, and the, the one thing you wouldn't want to have him do with this is use a synthesizer, or, you know, synthesized uh, bagpipes, which he could also do, but which would sound absolutely horrible. So, hmm. yeah, it would be, and it also adds to the show to have the the live band. I mean, he could he could do that. He could do that very. And there are bagpipe bands all bands all over the U.S. Um, so that's not, you know, that's not impossible. You're right. The expense, how much would would that cost? 
you know, I don't know. Um, I would think McCartney's making enough money off of these shows to where that's not going to be that big of a problem. But I think the bigger issue is whether he will perform the song or not. And apparently he will not for whatever reason. You know, either he's mad at Cat, you know, he's mad about the way the song turned out. I mean, the fact that he ha- he's I think he I think he did do it once in America, but the fact that he generally does not do it here. And I think Rusty even said that when we were when we had him on the show. You know, uh, I mean, I it's it, I mean the chances that he would do it here are, you know, are less than practically less than zero, I suspect. And that's too bad that I would still. And I, there are a lot of other people who agreed with me on Facebook that they would also like to hear it. But we also are re- kind of somewhat resigned to the fact that it's not going to happen. So okay, and uh, it's a great song, and I too would love to hear him him pull that one out. Uh, my number four song is a song that I've talked about here on the show, which I think would be a great addition to his live set, and that would be The World Tonight. The World Tonight, to me, is a great rock song, and it was okay. picked as the first single from Flaming Pie, and whenever he's done songs from Flaming Pie, he never picks that one, which surprises me. Um, I really, I, I tend to pick the rockers more. I think that Paul's rock songs have a different life to them when they're live. Not that they're weaker when they're in the stereo, but there's just a lot more punch sometimes to certain songs. Um, and we've discussed that before, especially with the Venus and Mars material and Winds mm-hmm. of the Speed of Sound. But I think The World Tonight would work really well as a live song, especially uh, when Paul's strong vocals would kick in when his voice builds uh, in the song. It's 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 a song that I've always... I, I've wondered why he's never chosen to do it live. And he will do something like... The title track to Flaming Pie or Calico Skies, which I love. I love those two songs. But I just don't understand why he's never chosen to do The World Tonight. So, like I said, I would tend to pick The Rockers. That's one of the songs that I think would really translate well live, The World Tonight. Okay. How about you? Do you, do you agree with me? Um, yeah, I think that's, uh, that's not one of the songs I picked. But, yeah, I think that would be a, that would be a good song. I think that would be a, a very good song for, for him to do. Um, I hadn't... Like I said, I did not choose it. It wasn't even on my list of also rans. But um, yeah, that would be that was a good suggestion. That was good. Okay. Okay. I'm sitting here, you know, going back and forth, going, maybe I'll switch songs and say, but let me pick one that I know for sure that I feel good about him doing is "My Brave Face." I would absolutely love to hear him do that. I know he's done that before, and I would love to hear him do that again i think it's just a marvelous song mm-hmm. i mean for i mean it's one of the strongest songs i think that he's done in his solo career um i i just r- really really love it and uh um i would love to see him resurrect that for you know at some point and play it and i think it would sound great uh i think uh i think the band would do a great job with it um and uh you know i remember hearing i um i believe he did it i can't remember what year he did it but i I believe I heard him do it in the past, and you know the way it starts out with the "My Brave, My Brave." You don't want to hear me sing, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but anyway, I mean uh, that gets everybody excited and going, and I, and I think it would be a great song to do. Yeah, well, he did the song on one tour only, and that's when "Flowers in the Dirt" came out, the '89 '90 tour. Mm-hmm. It's a great pop song. There's no doubt about it. I would love for him to bring that back. It requires really strong harmonies, so the band would really have to work on that. So, yeah, that's definitely one I'd love to hear him do again. Okay. Uh, My number three song Mm -hmm. is Take It Away. Ooh, very good. Take It Away, I think, would work because, for one thing, it was a hit. It was a top ten hit in the States. And I could just hear Paul doing it live. I think it's a song that he's especially fond of from that time and from the Tug of War album. And I can also hear, as much as I would love to have a live horn section, like in the Wings Over America days, I can hear Wicks playing all the horn parts on the keyboards there. And I would guess you probably need two keyboard players at the same time to play the two different parts. So Paul would probably play the piano, and maybe Brian Ray would play the bass. I don't really know how it would be configured, but I could certainly hear that really working well live. It's an up-tempo song, great catchy tune, great hook. A lot of people remember it. And I think Paul's voice still would, would really be strong on a song like Take It Away. Um, it's one that I think would, would very much... When it comes to Tug of War, when that album came out, I was all over ballroom dancing. 
Born Dancing to me is like the, one of the greatest singles that never was. And I always wish that it had been a single. And I always wish that Paul had done it live. But for some reason now, as much as I love Born Dancing, Take It Away just seems like a really good live song. And it just seems to, I, I just, I can hear it. I can hear this band do it. And, you know, it's another song where you need those lush vocals, harmonies towards the end of the song. But, um,. I definitely would like to see him bring that one in. He, he really, we talked about this before, when it comes to Paul's tours for the longest time, he'll play Beatles, he'll play 70s, he'll play the new album and very little in between. I'd like to see a lot more represented from the 80s and 90s mm-hmm. and the previous decade as well to have it spread out a little bit better. But uh, certainly one from the 80s that I wish he would do is Take It Away. Okay. Well... I'm going to say ballroom dancing. <laughs> See, I didn't know you were going to say that. That's well, funny. Well, actually, I was going to say it later, but after you mentioned it, I went, you know, let's bring it in now. Uh-huh. Because I really love his vocal on that song. I think it's oh, yeah. it, it is just absolutely marvelous. And in a live setting, that would be, especially, you know, when it gets into the second part of the song, when he has to yell, when he has to really put it as, you know, really go ballroom dancing. I think that would just knock everybody's socks off. That would be just absolutely fantastic. I think we just lost half our listenership right there. (laughs) We probably, we probably did. Um, Well, we'd lose all of them if I sang so. Well, yeah. Well, that's why I don't want to, that's why you don't want me singing on the (laughs) show. So why are you? No, well, I know I'm not (laughs) Paul McCartney. I, and I and I think Very probably about ninety five percent, at least ninety five percent of the audience will agree with that. Uh-huh. But <laughs> in any event, I mean, I think that would be uh, that was really one of the highlights of um, give my regards um, for to me. Broad Street, yeah. Because I mean, that was you know as bad as that movie was, that particular song was just absolutely fantastic, and um, so I would. Really love to see him play that. I wonder if you know the, maybe the reason he wouldn't, if if he wouldn't, would be you know the memories of that film because I don't think. But uh, I mean, some uh, there were a couple of people on the survey who men- mentioned uh, Once Upon a Long Ago. Yeah. yeah. And uh, as much as I like that song, that isn't one of the choices I had. But I mean, that would have been interesting to have. I to think about him playing that too, but uh, I, I don't particularly think he, you know, that would even be even close to being a, a possibility. Well, I like your choice there. I may not agree with what you said about the film, Give My Regards to Broad Street, because there's quite a lot in there that I enjoy. Okay. But let's just go on with the rest of our right. survey here. All right. My number two choice, which I know is amongst uh, most fans' top choices. Okay is Uncle Albert Admiral Halsey. Okay. And the reason why, number one, it was a number one hit. Mm -hmm. It was his first number one hit. Most people know it for that very same reason. It's such a marvelous piece of music, and we've talked about this before, so many different sections in the song that are all strung together. Can you picture everybody saying, hands across the water? Right. Uh, It'd be so perfect. That would would be be one of those songs like Hey Jude that people could sing along to. Right. You know, or sway their arms to back and forth during the chorus of that. It, it amazes me to this day with all the performing that Paul McCartney has done, and he has done quite a lot of it through his career, that there are still some very big hits that he still has not done live. Mm-hmm. And that is one of them. And to have a song that hit number one, especially, a number one hit in America that he's never done live, I find that rather odd. But I do know that because of all the tempo changes, it's not as easy a song to play live for that reason. So okay. that could be a reason why he has stayed away from that particular one. But I would definitely put uh, that one in there. Okay. Uh, my number two song is going to be Oh, Darling. The vocal on that, again, for the vocal. And because the band would be able to do that, that would be a very simple one for the for the band to do and and I mean he would be just he would sound just great and they would they would all get in there with him um and it would just be it would be a marvelous surprise if he pulled that one out uh 
so well but uh yeah i think that would be that would be a great uh a great possibility and um i don't recall if he's ever done that before period. No, no he hasn't yeah so but here here's my question to you for all that's been said on this show and through the different guests that we've had from mm-hmm. time to time do you think that vocally he can handle it well vocally him by himself probably not but he would have help and i think they could work that I think they could work that out between between Abe and and uh, and Brian uh, and uh, Rusty. I think they could they could get that they could make that work. Well, I, no matter what, the lead vocal has to be Paul, and the others harmonize with him. You can't mm-hmm. substitute the others. Right. Oh, I think they could make it work. I mean, there's some there's some. I mean, the fact he does live and let die uh-huh. still um, as well as he does. I don't uh, I don't think there's an issue there. Do you? I think Oh Darlin's much tougher to sing. Do you? Yeah, the higher register, especially the middle part. When you told me you didn't need me anymore, that part, that's very hard. Uh, d- true. You know, I just, um, it's kind of like Monkberry Moon Delight. I would never in a million years expect him to do that one. Mm-hmm. You know, he'd, he'd kill his voice after one one time doing that song. So Oh Darlin would be a strain. You know, I'd love to hear him do it, don't get me wrong. So, uh... Yeah, if if um if he would do that one that would be a real treat. I just hope that he can he can uh handle it locally. Well, we'll we'll see. All right. Anyway, so number 1, my number, number one, one choice. Go ahead. For some reason I I didn't even have to think about this. It just it's it's been in the back of my mind. It's one that I've always wanted him to do live. Helen Wheels Helen okay. Wheels, to me, is just a great rock song. It was the kickoff single in America for Band on the Run. That opening guitar riff, which is so classic. You know, there's so many great opening guitar lines that came out of Beatles songs. And out of the solo stuff, that opening guitar riff from Helen Wheels is one of my absolute favorites. I can hear him sing that one really well. I can hear the band sing along with it. It would get everybody going. It could be one of those really great rockers that he saves towards the end of the show, kind of like what he's done with High, High, High. I really think Helen Wheels would work very well in the show. And again, if you look at these songs, they're all up-tempo, the ones that I picked for the most part, mid-tempo to up-tempo. And I try to pick rockers, because if you're in a stadium or you're in a venue that's 20,000 or more, right? and you can you can pick some really strong rock songs that everybody can get into, uh, that would be one of them. And since, you know, there's going to be a lot of mainstream fans or young fans that don't know Paul's catalog, his solo catalog that well, chances are it's on Ben on the Run. They should know that one, <laughs> I hope. Uh, it was on Wingspan anyway. Helen Wheels would be a great, great addition to the show. You know, and there's nothing like pulling out a rocker that he's never done live before that most people know. Okay. And that one would be in that category. Okay. Your number one would be? My number one would be um, Come and Get It. Wow. But he, he's done that already. Yeah, he's done it. He hasn't done it in a while, though, but he, he has done it. And um, actually, the, the discussion, uh, I just interviewed uh, Joey Mullen uh, yesterday, and we actually talked about this. And Joey and I said, I asked Joey if he had ever discussed this with Paul, and he said he had not. But he said he would love to see him. He's seen films of him doing it, and he would love to see him do it. Mm -hmm. And I would, too. I think it would be a a great song. I think you mentioned Hi, 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 and I think that's another wonderful song. He's done that more than once, I believe. Oh, Um, yeah, he's he's done it most recently on the Out There Tour. He brought that back, and he hadn't done it since the Wings Over America Tour. Right. But uh, Come and Get It, he hasn't done it in a while, and I think... I think that would be a a, 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 surpri- a a real surprise. Well, he only did that one in Europe, mm-hmm. and that was a few years ago. He did it for a few shows, and then he took right. it out. So, yeah, that would be nice. be nice to see him bring that one back, especially uh, there are certain songs that for one reason or another, and we talked about this with Rusty Anderson, he's done them in Europe. He doesn't do them here. Right. She's Leaving Home is one of those songs. You Won't See Me is one of those songs. You don't know why. It could just be that um, those are the songs that he planned to do for those shows, and then he tacked on some new shows in America, and then he decided to take those songs out. I don't know if there was any rhyme or reason behind you know, taking those songs out. 
It could just be he felt like taking him out at the time. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of I suspect there isn't a whole lot. I, I think we're, you know, if you try to analyze it, you can overanalyze that very easily. I think it's just, you know, a certain set of shows he'll do a certain set and then he'll change it for an, another set of shows. Like, if you know, once he goes over to America, I, I kind of doubt there's any more discussion about it than that. I don't, you know, except in the case of Mal Kintyre, where we know kind of that there's a little bit more involved. I really doubt he's putting as much thinking into this as we are. Right. <laughs> um, I'm curious though, do you have your do you have your full list or is that or did you only have the five or did you have others that you uh, had thought about and not mentioned? Well, I have an honorable mention, but I could just off the top of my head mention more songs, but well, go ahead uh, the and one that I, I'm curious cuz I have several and I was wondering what others you had had thought of that you didn't mention? Well, this is one that I would have made number five, but a part of me said you got to put a Beatles song in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so for that reason, um, Girl School. Okay. Since you mentioned Mull of Kintyre, I've always loved Girl School. That was the A side here. That's what they played in America, and I always thought it was a great rock song. And uh, I just think that that song would smoke live. Okay. Granted, again, you've got the more loyal fans, the more hardcore fans that know that. A lot of the younger fans, the more casual fans, are not going to know Girl School. But it's just another one of those rockers that I wish that he would do live that I think would work really well live. The other thing that I would like to say, and I know I brought this up in a previous show, mm-hmm. is that I wish almost as much <laughs> as as I do Paul adding new songs that he's never done live before, I wish that he would do new tributes to John and George. I really mm-hmm. think he should give here today a rest. I think he should give something a rest. He's done those two songs for over a decade now. And, you know, the, there may be some of you who will say, who are we to tell Paul what to do? Here today, at least, it's his song for John. He wrote it specifically for him. It's a very personal song, so it probably means so much to him to do that one. But when you think about the fact that there's so many John Lennon songs that he could do live from the Beatle days or even his solo career. I remember many years ago he said he'd love to do Beautiful Boy. So do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think the crowd's going to say, no, you shouldn't do that. I think they would be very touched to hear Paul do a John Lennon song solo or in the Beatle years. And when you think about the ones that Paul has cited through the years as ones that he's admired, Tomorrow Never Knows especially, I would love to hear Paul do Tomorrow Never Knows. How about if he did Imagine? That's fine. It's just yeah. that it's so... It's you, just, I mean, that it, just the thought of that is like, is, is you know, is enough to... I mean, can you imagine the rea- reaction? No no pun intended, but I mean, the audience reaction would... The audience would go crazy over over that. Uh-huh. Yeah, they really would. Yeah, I, I just... When it comes to John stuff, I'd rather that... It, imagine is is a great song... It's 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 an anthem at this point. It's some it's a song that is so much his signature song. I think it's kind of overdone. I wish that he would pick another song. It'd be much cooler to hear him do something else. It probably it probably would, but Paul's voice, you know, handles ballads so well. That's that was my point. That it would be nice to hear him do that ballad. But Paul to- Paul especially loves Tomorrow Never Knows. He mm-hmm. loves Strawberry Fields Forever. He could do, you just mentioned before, he, he did a tribute to John right. in uh, 1990 in Liverpool right. where he did Strawberry Fields help and give Peace a Chance as a medley. He mm-hmm. could do that again, or it would be pretty cool if he just did Strawberry Fields in its entirety. Mm-hmm. Or I on the Walrus. He loves those songs. Right. I don't think it's that big a stretch for him to do those. He did Being for the Benefit of Mr. Kite, which I think he did in part just so that he... he would let people know that he had a hand in writing the song. But, you know, I think that he would be right at home doing Tomorrow Never Knows or any of these songs mm-hmm. or, or Strawberry Fields Around the Walrus. Those, those are great classic songs from the Beatle years that everybody identifies with John, and I think that would be a really good tribute to him. It's, it's tougher to pick what he would do for George um, for some reason, and I don't know why. It's just how my ears hear it. I could hear him sing Think for Yourself. But I don't know, you know what else he would do. It was great when he did All Things Must Pass. He was wonderful doing that. And For You Blue at the concert for George. Mm-hmm. But I wish he would do something else, something different for George other than something. So well, that would mean a lot to me if he, if he would mix that up a little bit. Because okay. it has been a long time that he's done those two songs. 
That's true. So, um, That's true. And I realize he's going to a lot of venues where people have never seen him before. So for them to hear him do here, here today in something is something new for them. That's true. And well, I had, I had some odd choices that I did not mention. I did have Helen Wheels in my maybe list. Um, but I also had um, Beware My Love, which, mm-hmm. I almost, nice. which, I, which I came very close to putting as one of the top five. Um, Little Woman Love, another one. Okay. Uh, Wait, which wow. is a, another one. And this That's... one will probably shock you. You ready? Say, say, say. Um, it doesn't shock me, but you'd have to have somebody to share the lead vocals with. Right. And I think that, that would be uh, would be Abe, really. Uh, I think Abe would do a great job with that. Mm-hmm. But that would be kind of, but, I, but I think on that one, because of the history of the song, he probably would never do it. Why the history of the song? You mean the history of him with Michael Jackson, period? Right, right. exactly. I think he's still proud of the music. Mm-hmm. Just what transpired with Michael taking ownership of the Lennon McCartney catalog. Right. Now that, I don't know that he'd want to bring up memories of that at, at concerts, but may I don't know. It depends on where he is. You know where his head, head is at with that. I mean, he still, you know, he still obviously wishes that you know history had turned out differently, and and he owned the music, and, and apparently that's not going to ever happen now. But in any event. Um, but yeah, you know, I think sometimes, like you just said, we analyze too much. That's true. There's so many times when, and, and I go through this with my own family because we go to the McCartney shows together, mm-hmm. and um, we bring up certain wing songs and whether or not Paul would do them, and then one member of my family will say, "Oh, that song will remind him too much of Linda," you know. So <laughs> we all kind of do this. We we try to think like, you know, what would Paul think of that song at that time? Well, Some songs, the, like My Love, I'm sure is a very emotional song. That's a song he he directly connects to Linda. And he's broken down doing yeah. that. Yeah, he's, he's and I think if if it was if that issue of, of reminding him of Linda was really a problem, he wouldn't be doing any wing songs in his sets, and that's not the case. Hmm. So I don't think that's uh, an issue. I don't think that's a problem at all. But Not certain songs will remind him more of Linda. Right. But I'm saying I don't think that's a reason why he's going to pull them out of the, out of the set list. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. You want a few more honorable mentions from me? <laughs> Go ahead, and then I can, then I okay. can talk about the survey. All right. Uh, a few songs I'd like for him to bring back. Mm-hmm. Silly love songs. Okay. I think that worked great live. Sometimes okay. I prefer hearing the live version over the studio version. Okay. I would like to hear him do She's a Woman, but to do it the way the Beatles did it. Okay. With uh, electric guitars, as opposed to the acoustic version that he did with um, uh, during Unplugged, which I love, too. And I think it would be really cool. That would be a great opening song, She's a Woman, in a way. Yeah, it would be, actually. I w- certainly would love ballroom dancing, like you said. And there are certain songs that I know he'd never do in a million years, mm-hmm. like Little Lamb Dragonfly, which is one of my all-time favorite songs of his. What are you laughing for? That song is because brilliant. somebody said that on Facebook. Somebody mentioned that on Facebook. Well, too. does and, that um, surprise you? It's a great song. It's mm-hmm. another one of those wonderful melodies and and a whole string of different melodies pieced together, and they all flow s- together so well. But that again, that would be a soft song, acoustic song. It's six minutes long. He'd never do that. Mm-hmm. You know, that would be a, a personal favorite of mine that I just know he'd never do. Okay, there's another one, another more recent one. I love to death the song Too Much Rain okay. from Chaos and Creation in the Backyard. I don't think you'd do that one. Again, it's another soft song. It probably and wouldn't work as well. it's also one that isn't really known very well. I don't think he'd, I, I don't think he'd go for obscure, really obscure songs. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you? Um, I, pretty, I pretty much gave you the whole, the, my whole list. Um, uh, I mean, the ones I didn't mention... Run for Your Life was another one I had on my list, uh, and what, you, what You're Doing was another oh, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. What You're Doing is a very overlooked, uh, mm-hmm. great Beatles song. That and Paul also Press to Play. Also, but that would be difficult. That would be pretty difficult, I think, to do. But uh, that's one I, uh, that's, cause it's, but it's a song I like. Uh-huh. I would like to hear him doing, doing that. But Run for Your, but What You're Doing, yeah, that would be, I think that would be great. Now, now, wait a second. There's no way that I, we can continue this conversation without my bringing up the fact that you just mentioned Run For Your Life, and a few minutes ago you mentioned Wait. Why, All right. Why those two songs? 
why? Well, actually, the bigger question is why didn't I put him in the list? Because I like the I like the solo songs better. But both of those, he you know he. I mean, they're they're just great as they are. And number one, you can because uh, their uh, weight especially is a kind of a deep song in the Beatles catalog, and it would surprise the heck out of everybody. Run for Your Life is not so deep, but again, with the history of the song, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, another one I was actually thinking of that I didn't put on the list was I'm Looking Through You. Okay. Um, Which he has done quite a lot. Yeah, I know he's done that. So, But in any event, the reason I didn't mention Wait and Run for Your Life was because they were kind of at the bottom of my list. The ones I did mention were a little higher up. So okay. Well, actually, were, it doesn't surprise me that much when you're talking about rubber soul material because... And I think I've talked about this before on the show. I think Rubber Soul was a real turning point there because I think it might have been like the last album where there were a lot more closer Lennon-McCartney collaborations. Mm-hmm. It continued a little bit more onward, but in 65, there are certain songs like Drive My Car, Paul admitted John helped him write. Norwegian Wood, Paul said that he helped John write. Um, and I do believe Wait is one of those songs that's that's more of a a 50-50 collaboration. Right. Same thing with The Word, which which Paul has done live. That's another one that he did in Europe and not here. He actually did it as part of a medley with All You Need Is Love. So, um, well, the chorus of All You Need Is Love. But, um, yeah, those are good choices. I can hear Paul sing Run For Your Life for some reason. I could hear that in my head. I could hear him do What You're Doing, actually. Um, I could hear, yeah, I could hear him do both, but What You're Doing, and especially Wait, I could hear him do uh, doing. But anyway. Okay. So what about our listener poll? The listener poll, the, the poll started yesterday, uh, or day before yesterday, actually. Um, and as of this moment, because I just refreshed it, I have 261 responses. And I'm going to run, I'm going to start from, you want me to go, how many far down do you want me to go? Just do the top 10. Okay. Start with uh, number 10, which number is? Number 10 is uh, uh, Beautiful Night. Excellent choice. Mm-hmm. That's an excellent choice. Again, it's a ballad, but it's a ballad that also, especially when you uh, consider the coda at the end, has a little bit of an edge to it. Yeah, I could s- possibly see that one. Now, let me let me make a reminder to everyone listening to this. This is today is Wednesday, and by the time the poll closes on Friday, this could be very different. So, um, and in fact, the lead has been going back and forth. So this may not be the way it is at the end, but as of this moment, this is the way things sit. Number nine, tied for number nine, eight and nine, is Rocky Raccoon and Mall of Kintyre. Okay. Interesting that we both uh, picked, picked those. Yeah, that we picked, picked those. That. All right. We talked about that. Number seven is My Brave Face. Hmm. Okay. So enough people love that song enough to bring it back. Right. Number okay. six, Another Girl. Ooh, that's another one. That's another one. No, I'm sorry. I put that on a list here. When I did my number five song, and I said it has to be a Beatles song, these are the ones that I put down there. Rocky Raccoon, Martha, My Dear, Another Girl, What You're Doing, P.S. I Love You, uh, Love Me Do, and When I'm 64. And truthfully, those those are all equal to me. Okay. But I just picked Rocky Raccoon because I thought it would be the most fun song to do, and I think that the, the crowd would really get into it more than the others. Number five, Backseat of My Car. Mm, wow, that, that ranked that highly. Yes, it did. Wow, that's that's a nice surprise. I'd love to see him do it. I don't think he will, but I'd love to hear him do that. Right. That could be, you know, when he does his whole set when he's at the piano. We'll do several songs in a row at the piano. That would be really nice. Number four is Hey Bulldog. Mm, I hadn't thought about that one. Mm-hmm. I, I, actually, I wouldn't have either, I mean, considering it's not a Paul song, but... Oh, well. Okay, yeah. well, I know Paul likes the song a lot, yep. so uh wouldn't surprise me, especially after you saw his reaction to right. uh, Dave Grohl doing it right. on the, the CBS special. Okay. Number three, Silly Love Songs. Hmm. That kind of surprises me, mm-hmm. in a way. I mean, I love the song. I just didn't know that there'd be that much interest or that mm-hmm. much of a demand for him to bring that one back. Okay. Number two, Uncle Albert. Mm-hmm. I'm glad to see. I, it doesn't surprise me at all there. No, everybody, feeling... that seems to be the Internet choice. Yeah. Everybody wants that. And number one is Oh Darling. Okay. And it, it, I, I, I have to say, I, I kind of wish I hadn't seen the results on the pod. I've been kind of monitoring it, so that's kind of why Oh Darling was in my head. But what can I say? 
Let me. I'm just going to run down. I, I can't. I don't have numbers on these, but some of the other, some of the others that got got say over fifteen uh, percent of the okay. votes. Figure of eight. Mm, okay. Danny Wren. I'm not going in order, and I'm skipping some. Uh, Magneto and Titanium Man. Uh, Honey Pie. Okay. Daytime, nighttime suffering. Oh, what I love to hear him do that. That's another <laughs> getting, one. Getting closer. Yeah. Okay. Getting closer. Uh-huh. Uh, beware my love. Mm-hmm. Uh, smile away. Mm. There's another. There's another good one. Yeah. And two of us. Okay. Well, he has done two of us, but right. it, you know. But uh, great list. Really good selections from people. Yes, uh, I, and I want to thank everybody on that. Uh, that, uh, on, that on Facebook that uh, suggested songs because that's where these came from. So I mean, uh, there, there's a lot of there are other songs that people mentioned. You know, once the survey started, that uh, they would have liked to have seen in there. And in fact, I did make one adjustment and actually uh, stuck a couple of songs in late. But I can't. You know, once the survey starts, you can't really do that. So, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, this is and, and I'm curious. Like I said, O Darlin and Uncle Albert have been shifting back and forth, and I really didn't expect that at all. In fact, I wasn't expecting O Darlin to do anything, and I'm really surprised that it's right now. It's right now in the lead. Um, Why are so, you surprised by that? That's a great song. It's, it's a great it's, song. It's but one it's of not, his best like vocals. Like I said, the the buzz on the uh, the buzz on the uh, McCartney sites and the Beatles sites the past couple of years has been for Uncle Albert, and I'm really kind of surprised that that O Darlin is even in the mix at all uh, as much as it is. Okay. But we'll see what happens come come Friday. Uh, the poll closes at 5 p.m. Friday, which is going to be, you know, before the show airs on Fab 4 Radio and we'll find out what happens and and Friday night I'll write this up and I'll have it published by the time it goes on the air. Mm. So I tell you, I would be very pleased if Paul brought in three or four songs that were different from the last set list. I mean, well, and I, I think that's without saying. After what he did last year, I'm I'm anxious to see what uh, to see what happens. Hey, he could very well not change a thing. <laughs> you I, know that's not going to happen. Uh, you don't know for sure. I mean, he's going to play. Interesting. Nobody brought up songs from the new album here. Nobody suggested other songs from new. That. No, that, that's true. Although I think that goes without saying, especially with the promotional single of "Save Us" that was sent out this week. I think. That's a no-brainer. I think no, that one's going to be in it. Yeah, but I'd love to hear other songs from them, especially I can bet. That would be that would, really be, that would be that would be fun. That yeah. would be fun. I'd be interested to see which way he, he goes with that. But so. you never know. You know, he may not add any new songs, but we'll find out. Oh, I think I think he will. I I disagree. I'm going to disagree with you on that one. Okay. I think well, there will definitely be new songs. I'm not saying it's definite. I'm saying there's the possibility. There's okay. always the possibility. All right. All right, so this has been fun, and if you, any of you want to get in touch with us, you can do so by writing to our email address, which is things we said today radio show at gmail dot com. If you want to get in touch with Steve, they can do so how you can email me at beetlesexaminer at gmail dot com, and and you can also contact uh, if you have songs that you want to that you hope to hear uh, Paul will play. By all means, send us a note. We won't be able to obviously get them in the show, but uh, we'd love to hear your reactions uh, at things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. Right. And if any of you want to get in touch with me directly, you can write to my email address, which is everylittlething at att.net. And if you can, please take a look at my website, kenmichaelsradio.com. There's lots of interviews with people. Connected to the Beatles on there and Beatles trivia and prizes given away each and every week. And sometimes there are special contests on the website as well where I'm giving away very unique prizes. So once again, that's at KenMichaelsRadio.com. All right. This has been a fun show. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Ken Michaels for Things We Said Today. And I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci for Things We Said Today, saying I'll look for you on my Beatles Examiner page, and we will see you next time.